we have already completed 3 bit and 4 bit asynchronous up counters in this presentation i will teach you 3 bit and 4 bit asynchronous down counters i have made two circuits here that you can see and both of this circuit will give you 3 bit asynchronous down counters again we are talking about the asynchronous counters that's why we have the clock that is not given simultaneously to all these three flip-flops the clock is not simultaneous therefore it is asynchronous counter and now we have a down counter it means it will start counting from 7 and end counting at 0 how can you get a down counter from a up counter that we have to see we will also try to find out the output waveforms so there are two changes that you can do Indi independently the first change you can do and you have a down counter the second change you can do then also you have a down counter so I have made these two circuits in which all these two changes are explained this first one is having a change in the output instead of taking QA QB and QC as my output like we did in case of the up counters we have taken QA complement QB complement and QC complement as my output definitely QA complement is my LSB least significant bit and QC complement is my MSB most significant bit and if you have this arrangement you have a counter that will count from 7 to 0 if you do not want to change your output you still want QA QB and QC as your output then you can change the clock instead of QA acting as the clock for the B flip-flop and QB acting as the clock for the C flip-flop you can take QA complement and give it to the clock of the B like I have drawn here QA complement is given as the clock to B and QB complement is given as the clock to C and uh, one thing you can see is the output QA, QB, QC is same like we have in the case of up counters so both of the circuit will give you the down counting and we will start analyzing this first circuit and for that I have already made this table in which the clock is there the outputs QA, QB and QC are there and this one, this particular one is for up counting because it is starting from 0 0 0 which is equivalent to 0 in decimal and ending its count to 1 1 1 that is equivalent to 7 in case of decimal so it is up counting and if I take Q C complement Q B complement and Q A complement then let's see what we have initially the values of outputs are 0 0 0 and if I take its complement I am having 1 1 1 and taking the complement of 0 0 1 I have 1 1 0 similarly 1 0 1 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 0 0 1 and finally 0 0 0 so this 0 0 0 is nothing but a 0 in case of decimal so this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 all the way to 7 now you can see the counting is starting from 7 and ending to 0 that's why it is down counting so the first circuit what we have done we have just taken QA complement QB complement and QC complement as our output instead of QA QB and QC and we have the down counting let's try to draw the waveform for this Q is there I have to just complement it so QA complement initially it is 0 so I have 1 then we have 1 so it will go 0 and now you can easily draw it by the concept of toggling and you have to perform every change when the clock is going from high to low that is our falling edge so for the next falling edge toggling will be there and we have 1 and again for the falling edge we have 0 because of toggling in the same way I can complete the output waveform for QA complement then we will do for QB complement so let's move to QB complement you can do it by analyzing the clock and this time the clock is QA so QA is my clock not 
this clock initially the clock has been given to our A flip flop is not acting as the clock for B that you can see from the circuit. So you have to see B and if you want to plot it directly then you can just take the complement of the waveform for QB. So I'm just going to take its complement first it is 1 then it goes low then it is 1 and then again it is 0 and we will draw QC complement now it is a low so we will make it high QC was low so we made QC complement high then QC is high so we will make QC complement low now it's time to find out the values of my QA complement QB complement and QC complement for different clock pulses initially you can see QA is 1 QB is 1 and QC is 1 then for the next clock pulse that is my first clock pulse I have it 0 1 1 for the second clock pulse I have 1 0 1 let's match these values I have it or not in my table 1 1 1 1 1 0 1 0 1 you can see I have a 1 1 1 1 1 0 and then 1 0 1 so I have my initial values matching from the table in the same way if I C for the seventh falling edge I have 0 0 0 so I am counting from 7 this is 7 this is 6 5 all the way to 0 so we have proved it from the waveform also that taking the complemented outputs we have the down counter now we will analyze this second circuit and uh, in this we have just changed the clock instead of feeding QA to the clock we have fed QA complement and in the same way we have fed QB complement so the clock will be changed it means I have to take the QA complement this one and it is acting as the clock for the QB so what we will do we will just plot QB so we will draw QB and I will show the falling edges these are the falling edges and QA complement is my clock you can see I have to find QB so QB is initially a low so it will remain low then the falling edge is there so it will go high so it is high till the next falling edge and then again it will go low now we will take the complement of QB so QB complement it is 1 then it is 0 and then again 1 this is Q complement and as you can see in the second circuit QB complement is the clock so we will consider QB complement to find out the value of QC I will just make the falling edges this is my first falling edge and uh, all the changes will occur in the circuit for this falling edge so we will plot QC QC is initially low and for this falling edge it will go high okay now we can see for the first clock pulse what we have for the first clock pulse I have QA as 1 okay and QB as 1 and QC as 1 so I have 1 1 1 that is my 7 so you can use either this circuit or this circuit the only thing you have to do is to change the clock you can change the clock like this or you can switch the output instead of taking QA, QB and QC you can take QA complement, QB complement and QC complement as your outputs both the circuits are correct and you can have your down counting by using this two circuits and I have proved the working of this circuit by using the waveforms this one is for the first circuit and this QB, QC and this QA is for the second circuit. I hope you got this. In the same way you have to do the 4 bit down counter. Only thing you have to do is to add another flip flop here because we need 4 bits. So we have to add one more flip flop and all the things are same. If you want 
to make it by this logic you have to take the qd complement or if you want to make it by this logic you have to give qc complement to the d flip flop to the clock of the d flip flop so i don't think it is required to explain you the four bit down counter here i think you will do it if you have any problem in this circuit or this circuit you can ask in the comment section but i think you will not face any problem because you have already uh, learned the up counter and it is nothing very much different from it we are just making small changes in the up counter so once you have a better understanding of the up counter how to obtain this waveform how this circuit is working it is not a big deal for you to understand these small things so this is all for this presentation i will end it here see you in the next presentation